Those were the headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. But on what's brewing today, Unicus Consultec, a tech-enabled global consulting firm focused on ESG and climate and accounting advisory, has got $10 million in a Series B funding. Now, the funding round was led by Nexus Venture Partners with participation from Soren Investments. In fact, in December of 2022, Unicus Consultec raised $12.5 million in a Series A funding round from Nexus Venture Partners and Soren Investments. Joining us now to discuss this further is Jamil Katri, the co-founder and CEO of Unicus Consultec. <coughs> Excuse me. Jamil, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. You know, you've bagged this $10 million. Talk to us about what you plan to do with it. Yeah. First of all, it's great to be back here on the show after uh, 15 minutes. <coughs> uh, uh, I think uh, si si since we kind of uh, started <coughs> Unicus, uh, which was around 15 months ago, uh, we've seen a significant growth <coughs> in, uh, uh, in business. Uh, we've seen a big scale up in our operations. We have we've kind of grown from uh, starting up in December 22 uh, to to being 350 people now. Uh, we've onboarded as a part of this process 150 clients. Uh, we've spent time opening eight offices now. Uh, so we have three offices in India, offices in the Middle East, offices in the United States, uh, and along the way uh, we've actually uh, invested in technology as well. Uh, so that kind of got to a stage where we started focusing on the next phase of growth for Unicus. Uh, and Arundhati, that's really what the race is for right now uh, in, terms, in terms of preparing Unicus for the next phase of, uh, of growth right now. Absolutely. So a lot of plans there with the $10 million that you have got right now. But why don't you give us a sense of the kind of demand you're seeing for your solutions? How is this market devel developing and what trends are you picking up for ESG and accounting around the world at this point? Sure. Uh, so, so Arundhati, we operate across uh, three markets. Uh, we operate in India, uh, in the Middle East, and in the United States. Uh, in India, there are four drivers for, 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 for the work that we do. Uh, the first dr uh, driver really is a very robust IPO market. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of companies uh, preparing themselves for IPOs, and that's driving a lot of our work around reporting governance and compliance. Uh, second is around transactions. Uh, so we're doing a lot of work around helping companies on transaction reporting. Uh, the third thing is uh, there is a lot of focus in India on governance in the startup ecosystem. Right. So a lot of our private equity venture capital clients are engaging with us to do work in that area. Uh, and finally, in the area of ESG, uh, SEBI really is focusing on a lot of kind of reporting by companies and integrity of data that goes into ESG reporting. So that's kind of driving kind of growth for us in India. Uh, in the Middle East, the entire economy is transforming, right? Uh, right? Uh, and on the back of that, there's a, there's a lot of focus on uh, governance by listed companies in the UAE. Uh, as we know, COP28 was held in the region. Uh, so a lot of big companies are focusing on sustainability and ESG as they diversify their economy. Uh, and in the United States, uh, given that uh, companies have become more conscious about price and value, okay. uh, a, a company love our kind of offshore model where we are able to provide consulting services from India uh, to clients in the United States. So yeah, overall, it's a, it's a very robust demand environment for us. Absolutely. And governance doing the thing for you there, it being top demand as well. But you know, artificial intelligence and generative AI is at the core of what you do. So how are you using artificial intelligence to sort of, you know, sharpen your product portfolio as well as engage with your market? Yeah. Uh, and I, I think our, our belief really is, and that was one of the reasons why, why we, we kind of raised this funds as well at this point in time, because we, we will continue to invest in our own technology. Uh, given that there is a big focus, uh, you know, what, what AI has done uh, and what technology has done is given us the ability uh, to do things using technology which were earlier uh, uh, not possible. Uh, we are investing in that uh, right now. So, so just as an example, we launched a product called Uniquest, right. uh, which uses uh, the, the LLMs that are available out there and then verticalizes that in the area of ESG and reporting, uh, uh, as a result of which uh, our users can use, use the product to do more focused research, more focused kind of uh, work around in the area of ESG and financial reporting. And I think that's, really, that's just the start. Uh, and we believe that the, the historical model of, of kind of throwing consultants at a problem is not the only way to do things. We will increasingly see technology doing work that humans were doing in each of the areas we operate in.
Right. Do you think that's going to lead to maybe certain levels of job losses along the way? How do you think this is going to play out? I, I, I think the, uh, and, and again, for those, for those who kind of follow this space, uh, one of our big markets, as we said, is the U.S. The U.S. is frankly does not have enough accountants. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, recently, a very large company in the U.S. came up with a release which said they're not able to come up with their earnings because they don't have enough accountants to do the financial statements, right? Uh, so I think in a world like that, I don't think it's about job losses. It's about kind of getting more productivity right. uh, into, into what is to be done. Uh, and I think that's, that's really the way we are sensing it right now. All right, so it's going to add to productivity is what it's going to do. Now, you have over 150 clients, like you mentioned, across the USA, Middle East and India, right? So give us a sense of the kind of clients you're currently working with and uh, what kind of growth are you witnessing in these markets? Yeah, uh, so uh, I think in terms of the kind of clients in India, our target mar market continues to be the very big companies uh, uh, or like I said, companies which are, which are preparing for IPOs. Right. Um, uh, uh, we do a lot of work with the PEVC uh, sector. Uh, in the Middle East, our target market uh, continues to be, again, the larger companies uh, which are engaging with us. Uh, but, and in the United States, uh, a target market is the emerging growth companies, right? Companies which are moving from Series B, Series C uh, to, to more towards uh, being Series D plus and, and kind of IPO companies. So that's, re that's really what our target market is right now. Uh, in terms of growth, uh, we, we've been, uh, you know, we've had a great run. Uh, uh, I, you know, we said this publicly last time uh, that our plan was to be a $100 million company right. uh, by calendar 2027. We're going to get to that by calendar 26 itself. Uh, and we have therefore revised our plans to be a $150 million company by calendar 27. Uh, this year, we will quadruple our revenues from our first year of operations. So, so yeah, that, that's really So, quadrupling your numbers there and that target being uh, shortened to 2026, that $100 million target. But, you know, that's my next question. You preempted it. What are you currently clocking at this point and what are the targets you've set for this year? Yeah. So, uh, so initially when we started the company, uh, what we had kind of guided the investors is that we will do $7 million of revenue in the first year, we'll do $15 million in the second year. Uh, and like I said, as compared to the $15 million plan, we're running at 2x of that. So we'll, we'll likely play for $30 million this year right. uh, for calendar 24. And then that takes us to our $100, $150 million target that I spoke about earlier. Right. So $30 million for this calendar year. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you could talk to us about the revenue split between the three geographies, and what will the focus be going forward? What's the expansion plan? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think the in terms of the breakup by geography, like we'd always said, we want to be a truly global company uh, focusing on each of the markets. And, and that's playing out quite well for us. Uh, one third of our revenues this year will be from the US, one third from the Middle East and one third from India. So it, I think it's quite, yeah. quite, quite kind of, you know, working out quite well for us. Evenly placed e at this point. E yeah. e evenly placed. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, we, but as I, as I said in, in the last time when I was on the show as well, uh, uh, you know, by, as we look forward to being a $150 million company, uh, more than, more than 75 to 80 percent of our revenue at that stage will come from outside India. Uh, in terms of where do we go from here in terms of growth drivers, uh, three things. Uh, one is the demand for services that we provide itself is very significant. Uh, the addressable market for what we do is $20 billion uh, in the markets that we are in. So we've, we've not even started. Uh, second is, you know, from a client perspective, like you said, we have 150 clients already. And a lot of those clients are telling us, what more can you do for us in terms of solutions? So, that, so the, nec the next level, our focus is on building new solutions, right? Uh, around AI, around, around consulting on technology risk, et cetera. So, so that's really the, the second focus. Uh, and the third focus for us really is new geographies. Right. Uh, so as we grow in these markets, the question is, could we do more in adjacent markets? Let's say if we are in the US, can we do more in Canada? If we are in the UAE and Saudi Arabia, could we do more in Qatar, Bahrain, other, other locations in the Middle East? So uh, that really is going to be the focus for us so going forward. Any plans right now to go to these new geographies or the focus remains here? Uh, I think for calendar 24, we want to stay focused on the markets we are in. Uh, but as we kind of exit 24 and kind of go into 25, uh, that's really where the new the new geo play is going to come for us as well. Right. Uh, all right, Jamil, thank you so much for joining us in the studios today and taking time out. But we wish you all the best on your journey going forward. And it seems like it's an exciting one. Thank, thank you very much. So, uh, this is a lucky show for me. So hopefully by the time we come back next, <laughs> yeah. we'll be a unicorn. So hopefully that's, uh, that's the next time I'm going to be interviewing you again. Uh, so right. we wish you all the best for yeah. that. Then. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Well, all